and welcome back to my channel where today we've got the interview with Danny Cashman, the former Brighton Academy star, where we spoke about all things football related and we had some questions from you on Twitter as well. Um, it's a longer video than usual, so be sure to watch the whole video or just listen. And if you enjoy, please be sure to leave a like and subscribe for some more content like this. Um, I'll leave Danny's links down below and be sure to check out my Twitch as well because I'll be streaming um, more in the near future. But for now, I will leave you with the video. Enjoy. All right, firstly, thank you for coming today. Um, it means a lot that you come onto my channel to talk about this. Um, I just want to start with, so you, you joined at the age of 11. You joined in 2012. What, what was that like? How did you, how did you come to join in Brighton? Um, well, obviously, at the start, I was at um, Crawley Town for a year and then that obviously ended because they folded so they didn't have the funds to to carry that on and then um brighton obviously got in touch said look we want to we want to get you on trial have a six-week trial and um i remember playing my first game against uh millwall away uh, and i'm pretty sure we lost quite quite heavily but i was quite surprised after that they pulled me into the change room after and said look we want to give you a, a contract and um and then, you know, eight, nine years later, it's all been kind of history, isn't it? Well, yeah, no, of course, yeah, definitely. Um, what was the, the routines like for, for your game days or your training and that throughout the, throughout the years? <clears throat> so throughout the years, it obviously changed as I got older because things became more serious. So it was just like when I was younger, it would kind of be, you know, we'd train, it would be a very heavy week. So we'd train Monday night, Tuesday, like evening, Thursday night, um, Saturday morning, and then Sunday game. And that would be all the way up to uh, 15s and then 16s. You start to play on a Saturday, which was probably a bit better in my eyes, but um, and obviously probably for my, for my parents at the time as well. So that would be that would be quite heavy. And obviously it was all over the place. So, you know, Mondays would be worth and Tuesdays would be uh, Eastbourne Thursday would be Falmer and then Saturday mornings would be Shoreham and then Sunday would be um, playing at Lanston College obviously we didn't have a training ground then so a lot of mileage and then you know when you get to 16s things become a bit different I think I started off 16s you know playing with them and then the back end the last half of the season I, I got moved up to the 18s permanently that was you know and obviously they're, they're full time then and I, and I was in school so I was taking an extra day out of school to, you know, go and train with them. And um, they would train all like Monday morning, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, you know, and then have a game on a Saturday and then normally have Sunday off. So that was, that was really heavy, but, you know, it was a good experience because obviously back then they were playing in the youth cup when I was younger and all them sort of, uh, you just get a bit more publicity and it's, um, it is good. And then 23s, um, yeah, it, it's, uh, it's very full on, but, you know, with 23s, I think you you go from a stage where, you know, you're a kid and you you work at like 18, just still doing education. So there's always that side of your training. After training, you have to do education. And I mean, for someone like me, if I'm being honest, it, it, it didn't really click right. I was never a big kind of school man, if you know what I mean. I, I liked being at school and having fun, but that was just about it. Like the learning side was probably quite other difficult. Um, 23 is you just focus on football. You literally go in, you have your breakfast, you, you train, you do your gym, and then you go home and rest. And, and, and I feel like that is a stage in your career where you, you really feel like you're near a first team sort of routine, if you want to say. But um, it, it's all it's all good learning experience. Yeah, no, definitely. And, and like you said there about um, mixing between education and that, did you did you find it hard when you were in, when you were in the under 18s and under 21s? to um, sort of mix the football with the education or could you cope quite well? Um, well, 21, in the 23s, you, you don't do education, obviously, because you're past that, oh, yeah, that yeah. age. Um, but 18s, yeah, because you're, you're in at half eight uh, in the morning. Uh, you literally have to rush your breakfast and then you, you do, I think, uh, an hour and a half, two hours of education before you then train. And then obviously you train... Um, for you know two hours again you have your lunch and then again it's back in the classroom at one o'clock till three or four and like your day just gets longer and longer and I, and I, 
and I appreciate people who do, you know, long hour shifts. And but um, I just feel like, you know, in football, especially, you're normally always on your feet. You're running around during the day. Like it, it does, it does tire you out. And back then, I was obviously back in dig, so it's not like I'm coming home to, to my parents. Um, all sort of things come into play where you're just like sometimes it just gets a bit on top of you and you, you just you're just drained a bit but I think that is part of you know being a footballer and, and them sacrifices is what you need to to make it yeah 100% um staying on the topic of like um game day and that did you have um uh, specific like um meal plans or exercise plans or was it sort <clears> of <throat> they give you the um the best the best insights as to what to have and then you sort of choose your own <coughs> Um, I think as you get older throughout the age groups, you you they make you learn more of what you should and shouldn't eat in terms of, you know, on game days, you know, the, the night before, you know, it should be a, a lot of carbs and just to make sure you've got enough energy. But I mean, uh, on, on game day, it's not it's normally quite it's normally quite routine. You know, it's the same food all the time, even when we go to away games, so like every away game we go to, we know what we're getting to eat. It's always there's always, um, you know, veg. Either at night time, the day the, the night before, it's always veg, you know, or lasagna, uh, fish, and a chicken, uh, and sometimes some like wedgies. That is that is standard. It's it's so boring. It's so it's the worst thing in the world. But you know, you know, you know, it's the right thing to have. But and it's just one of them things. I think on game day, you know, it's always if we've got an early kick off, you know, they'd always set out the breakfast for like. Even sometimes at like breakfast, you like you have to have pasta sometimes, you know, and that's something that's not it's not nice to have at ten in the morning, but you know, it's something you've just got to do. And um even, you know, nighttime games, there would always be, you know, pastas set out and sometimes scrambled eggs still and because people you know, people they like different things, they like eating different things because, you know, I mean for me I'd always I'll always have the same meal. I'll always have some pasta, egg. Um, and then my greens and then obviously after that I'll try and have two bits of toast just to keep refueling and make sure I've got enough energy to, to run around for 90, 90 plus minutes Yeah, no, I, I, I could definitely see it's um, the meal plan is definitely hard there <clears throat> um, yeah. Next thing I'd like to talk about um, the coaches so you you were with um, Simon Rusk but he left in February didn't he? Yeah. Um, what were those training sessions like? Was it was it, I know you said about it's quite intense and um, the older you get, but what what were the training <laughs> sessions like? Um, I think with Simon, you know, <coughs> excuse me, he's um, first of all, he's a great he's a he's a great coach. I think he gets the best out of everyone, and that and that's day in day out. You know, he's um, I'd say sometimes hard to talk to in terms of you know, but I think that's why it worked so well with Shannon Crofty. I think that was a good thing. Um, but uh, with Sai, you know, every day he'd be very demanding, you know, I think he was just, he was just preparing you for that first team chance. You know, if you misplace a pass, that, that, that should be an easy pass. You know, he's straight onto you. He's straight onto you and he's making sure no matter what it is, you're giving hundred percent. You're doing it the right way, and and no one can cheat, and I, and no one can cheat with him there because he's always he's always looking in, and he's always on everyone. And I think um, <clears throat> he he was just that, I think he was just a good a really good example of a twenty threes coach that was able to you know make people ready for that next step when you go into the first thing. It's gonna be you might have some big boys in there that, you know, are getting onto you because of certain things. And, and if you've never had that, you could go into a shell. I think having someone like that was, was, a, was a good thing to have. Yeah, definitely. Um, did, he, did he have any team of, like, um, analysts that would sort of talk you through your performances and training or was it just him and um, Shannon Crofts and that? Um, no, so we, we, do, we had our, you know, our own analysis. So after every game, we'd always go back over the game and even when we're playing a game, so say, for example, we had Southampton on uh, this weekend, let's just say, we would go over their clips, what they're, what they're good at, what they're bad at, where we can exploit their weaknesses, um, you know, what, what to be aware of, you know, if with Southampton, they're normally quite quick and strong, so a ball over the top probably would be our, be our aware of, you know, make sure, you know, you're ready for that. That, that would be all the, 
the scenarios, you know, sometimes we'd have players to 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 look out for and um it, in in the training week it would always be the training session would always lead up to where we can hurt Southampton, for example. So if if their fullbacks are not so good, you know, it would be, you know, how we can work the ball up and then work it wide and then, you know, get across it. And they would be the sort of things that happens throughout the week. Oh, brilliant. Yeah. Your your game day. So you you mentioned about uh, making making it better for your parents with travel and that. Um, did they have to take you to training and games or was it provided by um, <laughs> Brighton at the time? Um, so at the start, it was my parents obviously taking turns, kind of obviously they worked at the time. So they um, they were taking turns with, you know, who takes who, where and, you know, what time. And then as I got to about 15, 16, they Brighton started providing a, a mini bus that went to certain areas because obviously boys were from, you know, all over the, the place, you know what I mean? Um, yeah. So, and I live in Crawley, so there would always be a... a a bus that stops in Crawley, you know, just we have a, probably about 10 minutes from here from where I live. Um, and then I started jumping on that. Um, it would take us to training and take us back. We'd get back sometimes at like 10, half 10, and I'd school the next day. They, they were quite um, tough times, but it helped my mum and dad out, I think, a lot. It, it put a lot of pressure off them to kind of, you know, and, and focus them on, on their jobs, which was, which was quite handy, to be fair. Yeah, were were your parents um, super supportive of, of your sort of decision to, to play for Brighton? Oh yeah, one hundred percent. I think um, even at Crawley, you know, it was still a lot of a lot of miles, and uh, I mean, Brighton was nothing compared to Crawley. We didn't even have training care at Crawley, so it was one of them ones. But um, they they they've always been supportive with what I wanted to do, and um, it's you know, I think they they know. Uh, I love football. Uh, my dad loves football. Do you know what I mean? So it it kind of, it, I think he'd be gutted if you know I stopped. And and I mean, so would I. To be fair, you know, and I don't I don't plan on doing that anytime soon. Yeah. Well, speaking of not stopping, um, do you have any plans of, of what's to come next, or is is it all unsure at the moment? <clears throat> uh, no, I wouldn't say it's unsure. You know, I've had a I've had quite quite a lot of offers. You know, on the table. Um, I feel I feel like I'm in a good place. You know. Without you know saying too much. Um, yeah, no, of course not. Yeah, I wouldn't want to say too much. Um, you know, I think it's just one of them things where it's just you know, uh, a lot of you know a lot of Brighton fans and a lot of people have asked you know where I'm going, um, you know who and what and where and I, and it's, it's the same answer all the time. You know, you just got to wait and see and yeah, hopefully in the preseason, you know, wherever I am, you know, hopefully I kick on and 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 make a name myself and you know ultimately. You know, when you get let go from from a club, all you want to do is just, you know, prove them certain people wrong and then and then individuals to to why, you know, it, hopefully it was the wrong decision. But we'll have to see. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I can't wait to see where you end up. Um, if you don't mind, I just want to finish with some some questions that I've got from the people on Twitter. Um, the, the first one I'll start with is what has been the best moment so far in your career? It could be when you first started it at Crawley or it could be from Brighton. Um, my best moment in my career, probably my most proudest one would probably be playing for England. I think, you know, that playing for your country, I think I've never felt anything like that. I think when you go away with England, it is quite a... Um, it's quite. It's probably gonna be a bit of a shock, but you know, when you're there and you're, we always so when you go over England, it's always like at least ten days max, and sometimes you're like, oh, I just want to go on now. But then when it gets to game day, there's no better feeling. Like, yeah, that is that is a that is a thing you live for. You know, when you walk in the change room and you see the England show, your number on and your name above it, and you're like, is this real? Do you know what I mean? Like I haven't played at a very high, like seventeens was, was the highest I've played for. Um, but there's no better feeling, and even scoring for England, you know, it's just something that uh, you'll you'll never forget. You know, I've got I've got I think about five or six England shirts I've played in, uh, framed up, you know, um, pictures to to remember. And I've played with some great players as well, so that's been my uh, my my best moment so far. Yeah, definitely. Um, speaking of players you've played with, um, if you could play with anyone, past or present, who would it be? Past or present? Mm. Well, if I'm going to say anyone <clears throat> yeah. in the world, 
then I'm I'm saying I'm saying Messi. Messi. Yeah. That's, it's funny you'd mention that because I was going to ask you the Ronaldo or Messi debate, but I assume that that probably answers it there. I am I'm a Messi I'm a Messi fan every day of the week. You know I, I respect what Ronaldo's done. I think he's he's unbelievable, but I think Messi you know got is God's gift. I think. Yeah. Um, a lot of people were asking this. Um, if you weren't a footballer, what career path would you have gone down? <clears throat> it's a good question. I've never actually really thought about it. I've all, like as I've got older, and I'm like, because when you're younger, all you think about is one thing, and that, and that's that's just football. You like as you get older, some people say I have a plan B, and, and I sometimes think well, if you have a plan B, you focus probably too much on your plan B and not on your plan A, and I think. For me to play football, that's my plan A and, and that's what I want. But I think if I was going to take a wild guess, probably something like, uh, I don't know, let's just say a barber or something. You know, yeah. I quite enjoy getting my hair cut. So let's just say a barber, which is it's still yeah. a good job, I think. Oh, yeah. When you are training or, or in your in your free time, do you ever do you ever meet the, the first team or do you hang out with them a lot at all or, or not at all? Um, I wouldn't say... Uh, Let's just say no, not really. But weirdly enough, I was with them the other day, actually. We was all out, to be fair. But, um, you know, the first team are, have a lot more, you know, attention on them. They have to be wary of, you know, certain things. And so it's more like, you know, I've got mates in the first team, you know, like uh, me and Az Aaron are really good mates. You know, we we, we probably meet up most days of the week. Um you know, uh, and and they're all great guys. You know, I was with him the other night, and um, you know, after the um, we all met up after the um, Leeds game, and you know, obviously they all knew about me leaving, and they've all been supportive. You know, they've they have said some really good things, and and I can't thank them enough. Even you know when we're training, they're all great guys, and they've never made anything awkward or 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 there's no bad blood. So I'd have to say, you know, they are top guys. Yeah, of course. Um, now I've, I've got I've got a friend who is a massive Brighton fan, um, and he is a huge fan of uh, Romaric Yappi. And he he, yeah. wanted, he wanted to ask what he was like. Rom, I'll tell you what Rom is like. He is the quickest person I think I've seen or played with in football, and uh, he's frustrating sometimes because with someone who has that speed which is unfair in itself. And he likes to do all these tricks sometimes. And I'm just like, just kick it and run. Just kick it and run. Because yeah. no one no, I, I, no one in our league of football will catch that guy. You know, he's a, he's a good guy. Um, he, uh, he's quite funny. You know, as his moments, as we all do. But um, he, uh, he's, a, he's a good guy. Yes. Um... I've, it's, it's a recent one that I've been getting a lot. It's who do you think is the greatest finisher at the moment? Like um, any any league, any team. Who's who's the best finisher? Uh, what in the world? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Any any team, any league. If I'm saying the best finisher in the in any league or uh, right now, I would have to say Lewandowski. Yeah. I think I think he is a prime example of the best number nine in the world right now who can score with both feet, his head, and does all sorts of things that make you think, how's he done that? Do you know what I mean? Yeah, definitely. Um, speaking of that, I, who was your inspiration growing up? And did you base your play <clears> style on them? <throat> um, as I was growing up, I probably based my style on, you know, probably Aguero or Suarez, you know, I think Aguero is that, that type of player, you know, when he was in his prime that can come deep, link up the play, you know, and then still go and score goals. And I thought when I was younger, I did that very well. But then Suarez was kind of, I think Aguero was kind of what I was like. Suarez was the perfect number nine in terms of he could do everything as well. And I feel like trying to mix them two to, together into kind of my game helped me progress as a youngster and I think they were the two people that uh, I looked looked like who I wanted to be and play like you know what I mean yeah definitely 
Um, and the last question I have is, um, which of your teammates do you have the best memories with at the club? Oh, I mean, uh, we've had, we, I've got a lot of friends there, you know, that I will, you know, speak to for for a very long time. But I think, you know, uh, Jack Spong, you know, he's probably my best mate, you know, there and, and, and out of football, you know, he's my best mate, you know, Teddy, Teddy, <laughs> Teddy's a funny guy, you know, he's just, um, he does some funny things that make you, uh, question how easy how he's a captain sometimes but he's a funny guy you know you got Mark you got Rocco you know I think the whole change room together but you know Spongy is my best mate and uh you know uh, that's what that's that's the one I'm probably gonna say yeah um you, you just mentioned that about the training rooms which um leads me to ask what what's the what's the dynamic like in the changing rooms before like before games or in training <laughs> well, obviously, last year was a lot was a lot different. You know, we were all we were all in one train changing room because obviously COVID weren't around, and uh, so this year um, it was a bit different. You know, you get split up into about we have like six six change rooms with like seven of us in now, so we're all spaced out. You know, which is a uh, isn't ideal and isn't isn't the best thing. But from from what we've been given, I think. We've handled it really well, you know, on game days, you know, we'd have a speaker in there. We'd all just uh, enjoy it. We'd all enjoy, you know, sitting there, um, listen to music, you know, have a laugh, you know, just just relax before the game. And um, uh, even not even on, not on game days, I think training days, it's just, you know, there's always things to do, you know, whether that's, you know, go and hide someone's clothes, you know, just to annoy them or, um, you know, we'd always play this bottle game where you have to throw it to each other and the lid was each time you have to pull the lid off a bit and obviously whoever it goes on will splash them. You know, there's there's so many things that that were, I think, um, changing room banter is just the best banter in the world. I think there's nothing like it and uh, that's something you, you can hold on to, I think, for a long time. Yeah. Um, you, you said about the, the bottle game. Is, are there any other sort of games and um, funny stories with, with, the, with the club? Yeah, I mean, uh, there's been times, you know, where we've been playing. Um, do you know what tech ball is? No, I, I don't. I don't think I've heard of it. Heard of it. So, so basically, it's like a, there's like a table with like a net over, but it like ramps, and obviously you have to like try and get it over and then keep getting it over. Whoever would lose, we'd always say like, whoever loses, you have to pick one person in the team to go and either wet their stuff, their clothes to go home in. Uh, like cut it, um, put like Vix in it, put like whatever you could find. You'd have to do things like that. I think you know we play sometimes uh, at lunch when we're having when we're having lunch. We play rock paper scissors, and there would be like at least you know ten of us, and you'd always catch eyes with someone. And you'd always cheat. You'd always say right. You look at him and you say right, go rock. So everyone starts to clock on you, go rock apart from like one person. So we're going three, two, one, you'll go rock. And that one guy will go scissors, uh, paper. And then he's got to clear up, you know, 10 people's worth of plates in front of like all the staff and everything. And, that, and that's quite a funny, it's the worst feeling when you've, I've been in it myself. It's the worst feeling when you're doing that. There's so many things that I could, I could talk about, but, um, you know, we, we haven't got that much time, but it is no. some, there's some, there's there's some there's some funny things that happen in a ruthless things, but some funny things that happen in a change room. Yeah, no, definitely it definitely makes it a lot better considering sort of the, the situation we've been in the last like year and a half and that. Yeah. But um yeah, I think I think that's everything covered from me. Um but yeah, thank you again for um coming on. And um I can't wait to see where you end up next. Thank you, I appreciate that. Anytime. Um you want anything? Do you know what I mean? Just, just give me, a, give me a message. Or I'm open to my, to my messages. So, uh, yeah, of course. I appreciate you having me, and uh, and uh, thank you for that. So there we go. That is the end of the interview. And I just want to say once again, thank you so much to Danny for coming on. He didn't, he didn't have to at all. But it was a pleasure to get to speak to him and learn about the life in the academy. Like I said, be sure to leave a like and subscribe if you aren't already, and check out Danny and my Twitch in the links below. And I hope to see you in the next video.